Hi friends, this is Loli and welcome to Loli D's Creations. Please don't forget to subscribe, send me a comment and hit the notification bell. Today we will be working on a fall DIY. For that I'll be using this pumpkin sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. First I will be removing the um, paper or burlap material that I came with and it had a lot of um, glitter as well and I had to use heat in order to pick this up and there you see me scraping all of that glitter that was left behind. It was a task on its own. I went over and did that and cleaned it and now I'm going to be covering that surface with some scrapbook paper. I picked this one from a scrapbook that I got from Michael's doing clearance for five dollars. First thing I want to do is remove that um, bottom part there in order for me to put the pumpkin flush onto the scrapbook paper so I'm able to cut it a lot easier. Make sure that all the glitter is off before I put my paper down. And we will be using um, some Mod Podge to do this. I used the little Mod Podge that I got from the Dollar Tree, the little bottle that was for high gloss that I don't really use that one. I usually for covering projects I use the matte finish one. So I figured this one will be great for this issue. So there you'll see me trying to flatten the pumpkin the pumpkin was a little bit worth it but nothing that i couldn't work with so now we're gonna go ahead and apply that generous amount of mud podge all over the surface to ensure that we have a good adhesion to the craft 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 paper or what do you call it again craft scrapbook paper so I placed it in the corner, trying to you know, save as much of the scrapbook paper as I could. I do like to be smart when using my products as well. This is a beautiful piece of scrapbook paper. So I can, I can still use it for another piece. And here I'm using a little roller. I got this roller from Michaels. Also during a clearance sale, I got it for $5. Now that everything is set here, I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and then just cross about the perimeter of this the pumpkin there in order to have a nice clean finish. It took me a couple of times there because it was kind of hard to see the back and I wasn't sure if I was actually cutting the MDF board or the actual scrub of paper, but we got it done. So here we are, this is how we ended up with and we are going to finish up the, the edges there by using my sand block. It just gives it a little distressed look and it just makes it look like it's part of the the um, the piece there instead of just being paper stuck into it. Went ahead and cleaned up my space and now I am going to add a little bit of jute twine to the, or not. <laughs> I'm, you know, trying to figure out what piece there I want to use for the front there. I went over the packet that I got at the Dollar Tree of different words with words there. And um, I went with the Give Thanks one. I liked how the way that everything was centered. And right now it was trending right now with the, with fall decor is this cute blue or turquoise color that I'm really loving. And I really want to decorate my house with this here. So I wanted to incorporate that color into this um, decor piece so it will match the other things that I have in mind to make. Here you'll see me adding that um, folk art paint. I believe it was um, aqua if I'm not mistaken. So I, I went ahead and spread it on. I spread it on. Um, I glided through the piece there and let it dry. I had a little bit of help from my little hot um, gun there. Now I'm wrapping some of the jute cord on the stem of the pumpkin, 
making sure to add glue in the areas in which there isn't much surface space so I have more control on how the, um, the jute falls on there. So you'll see me in the top part that's a little bit harder to get together. There I'm adding more of the hot glue and making sure that everything looks nice and finished. Cut the excess, make sure that everything is nice and tidy. This part of the jute cord wasn't fraying much, so there was no need to burn off the little hairs. So here I'm just gauging to see how everything looks. I went ahead and got this piece of um, ribbon from Dollar Tree. I cut a piece that I thought was big enough to make my bow with and here I am struggling once again with these nails trying to make a bow so let's see my third try now and finally okay I guess that will be the way I would like it to be and this was kind of frustrating this part for me guys but we are gonna go back to it wrestling there with whether or not I wanted the bow in the bottom or I wanted it in the top if I wanted to add some sunflowers or not just gauging to see how you know all the colors work together and trying different things prior to it this is just part of the creative process we just you know try good things we try different things see if things work together you know and you create it as you go you don't always you know whatever comes on your mind the plan that you imagine ends up being completely different from when you actually put it into place because the colors may not work together as well but here we just work in the best we can with what we have and finally there you'll see me got the the bow the way that I liked it and here I am tying it up with a little bit of jute twine and you know trying to get it as tight as possible but making sure that my loops are in the place I want them and the tails are, you know, drooping in the way that I would like them to be. There we go. And I was thinking, you know what, that will be cute with a little sunflower right in the middle of the bow. So I went ahead and took this sunflower. This also came from the Dollar Tree my packet it comes from two different sizes this is the smaller size they were a little bit um, flat and folded within each other but I just fixed it a little bit and it's all ready to go I'm still not sure what the, the, the color there or that little sign that says give thanks it's not the color that I envisioned it's more blue than that turquoise, turquoise color that I was going for so I am still trying to figure it out if I'm going to keep that color or if I'm going to try to change it in some way. I just wanted everything to be, you know, matching each other with the colors that I have in mind and that turquoise color that I really wanted to be in the decor this year for my house. So once I'm ready there, I was just adding a little bit of hot glue to the knot there to make sure the knot did not come apart. And I was a little impatient and ended up touching the hot glue twice and getting myself burned. But eventually we got it done. Just be a little bit more patient than I was when you're trying to do this project. Just to make sure that everything is um, dry and you don't get burned. So now that everything is done with the bow, I'm happy with it. I'm adding it there with a little bit of hot glue right in the center. And we're gonna let it dry. And I decided to take one of the little, <clears throat> sorry, I take another of my um, paints. This one had a little bit more of a green tint to it. And I just wanted to do like a dry brush over the sign to bring it over to the color that I had envisioned a little more. So I just added a little bit there to my mat and I just 
dry brushed it over the existing color just to give it another tone to it and there you'll see it as a little bit more um, turquoise than blue. The first paint that I added it really looked more like a baby blue than turquoise even though the bottle looked like turquoise but um, once it was dry it was a different story so we're just trying to salvage this piece trying to get it as close to what you know our envision as far as the color and you know we kept working at it I was determined to you know get it to how I really wanted it and you just gotta keep trying sometimes you know if it doesn't work out just try again kind of tempted there to put the sign back on but I'm like you are going to put paint all over your scrapbook paper so I'd stop myself and put it back in the meantime I just attached a little sunflower to the middle of the bow I just went ahead and cut the the wire that it came in the middle that's one in order to be able to make it be flush and for it to adhere correctly to my bow now I'm trying to tone down a little bit that color so it's not so much blue and it has more of a faded um, tone to it. So I'm using some of my white wax from Waverly just to you know give it a little bit more muted tone to it that's closer to the color that I was trying to achieve. By that time I thought it was maybe too much white so I wiped down the excess then it was better, but I still wasn't happy. But I said, you know what? This is, this is a good. This is as good as it's gonna get for now. So I went ahead and used my wood hot glue and attached the gift tank sign to the higher top portion of my um, pumpkin there. Now we are going to work on the little stand. The little stand was cute, the color it had, but I wanted it to be more finished. So I used um, the truffle color chalk paint from Waverly and I gave it only one coat in all you know the front the back the sides all around it and I like the way that it came up I think it, it, it tied the piece together I gave it a rustic little feel so I was happy with that so I just took my heat gun and helped it dry up a little bit quicker if you do this just make sure that you're using your heat gun away from the plastic mat. The plastic mat is great for painting, but it tends to work when you're putting the heat on and it can melt. And there I have paper and plastic, so it could be kind of a, a fire hazard. So I'm just making sure to, you know, do my heat away from that plastic to, to avoid it getting all um, worded and burned. So I like that truffle color, so I thought it would be a great way to incorporate that to the edges of the piece there to give it a little bit of more distressed look and also it will give it a little bit more of a 3D feel to it while at the same time tying the whole thing together with the base. So I went ahead and did just one small coat all in the edges and I just, you know, let the brush hit the, the paper a little bit so it would look like it was a little bit worn on the edges and I really like the way that this came out it really gives it a little bit more interest to the piece you can barely see it there in the camera but in real life you look at it and it just looks so rustic and so natural so I really liked it like that so I was happy with it everything was dry so now I'm gonna reattach the pumpkin into its stand and make sure that it's secure. I like this like this. I like the simplicity of it. But today I was just feeling like a little bit extra. I wanted to put a little bit more detail into this. So I was going in my head over different options. I was thinking of maybe just adding a bit of sunflowers or maybe some of those white flowers that you see me have in there. I played around with so many different options. Um, I like the white, but I'm like, I felt at the same time, like I had maybe too many colors going on. So I kind of, you know, I scratched that, that option. I'm like, it looks cute, but I think it's a little bit too much. 
So, uh, I decided to go a different way. I was trying to see and if maybe the sunflower together with the white sunflower will look better. And no, just the little sunflowers there will also have any interest, but no. And then I found this greenery from the Dollar Tree in my stash. And I like the way that it incorporated um, another natural color, the green and the white in there. So I went with this option. But I, want, I didn't want it to just sit like that. I wanted it to have a little bit more of a rustic feel and for it to be more cohesive with the pumpkin itself. So I wrapped the bottom of one of the stems of the stems on to with a little bit of jute twine. I just kept wrapping it over and over it. I kind of make like a thick um, wrapping. I wanted it to look like it was a like a like it was a potted plant kind of. So I just you know I wrapped it a couple times. I'm sorry that there I'm a little bit out of focus, but um, there you can see a little bit how it just looked like a potted plant there so once i was happy with that i cut the excess and i hot glue the little end and there i'm just you know checking to see how it will look in the actual pumpkin so i was happy with the position in there so i added some hot glue in the back of the jute twine of that piece and in the bottom and i secured it to one side of the pumpkin there i like the one so you know what i like um, symmetry so I'm like you, you just need to get something in the other side because now I felt like it was just like negative space there and there was more to need to be added so I did the same thing I added another piece of that greenery I crunched it together and tied the jute cord all around it creating again another um, jute plant jute cord planter and um, went ahead and did the same thing once I was ready I attached it um, you know with some hot glue make sure that everything was cohesive that that the planter looked you know kind of thick once I was happy I went ahead and you know glued the final piece and cut off the excess of the two cord <clears throat> I'm sorry so I did put you know a planter on each side of the pumpkin there I really wanted to add some hay bales, but the ones that I had were so big I couldn't come up with small ones. But maybe in the you know I got some to the other Dollar Tree, so maybe I will incorporate them later on, or maybe I will just keep it as it is and use it for another project. Here I'm sorry that you're seeing the back of the pumpkin. It was kind of a, of a hard um, angle there, um, so. As usual in every video I burn my finger with some hot glue I, I don't learn my lesson apparently but I had long nails and I couldn't use my finger protectors because they were not fitting on my fingers so I did the best I could put there and I attached it the same way I did the other one with a little bit of hot glue on the bottom and hot glue on the side that I was gonna stuff to the pumpkin and all done now I wanted to add some sunflowers to like you know to balance things with the sunflower on the top so I added some flower on this side of my little planter there the same way I just cut off that um, piece of um, wire that comes attached to the middle of it and added some hot glue and stuck it to the corner there where my planter was and I did that in both sides there and I really like the whole you know the feel that it gave it I was pretty happy with that. I was wondering, okay, that, that piece there in the middle needs a little bit of space. It needs a little something. I kept playing with different options. But I, you know, I was, I felt like I was in that time in which you're like, maybe you're doing too much. Maybe you're overthinking it. You know, it looked nice. I like the way it was, it turned out. Um, the only thing is I still, I don't know, I still felt like that middle section there needed a little something. I thought maybe it's putting some of those buffalo check pumpkins in there. But I think it was too busy with all the pattern that they, this, this scrapbook paper already had. 
So you know what I just said, you know what, let me just try putting a little bit more of the white wax just to turn down the blue a little bit. It was a little bit too bright for me. I was going for a more of a muted light light blue color. So here you see me at, 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 at applying um, some of that white wax on the letters again. It looks very white there guys, but it's, it's not as bad as it looks on the camera. Actually, it was like a little white wash um, finish it ended up looking like. You can totally see the blue peeking out and um, the white just gave me that color that I was going for and it just felt like powdery turquoise color and it's, it turned out really cute. So here is the finished product. It took me about I will say about 15 minutes to complete it was really nice and um, I wasn't satisfied you see that bundle of raffia I'm like I need a little bit more fall in the life of this pumpkin <laughs> like I told you I was being a little extra this this day um, I was feeling super creative I, I wanted to experiment different things so I took some of this raffia I think I got this from Walmart a while back like two or three um, falls ago um, so what I did is I just took about three strands and I just wrapped it around my hand until the strands were completely out of that bundle and I was left with you know that that piece there I'm sorry this is out of focus guys but this is pretty much what I did. I kept it like that. Then once I, I slide my fingers, my hands out of the bundle as best I could. And I left one finger in the middle so I can cut the ends there. I can cut them into two separate um, groups of raffia. My idea was to just have it look like, you know, when you go to... Um, the farm you and fall and you see the little straws all over the place from the hay bales that's what I was going for I was going for that hay bale um, look I wanted to um, achieve that like I said earlier I really wanted to have like little hay tiny hay bales in between the, the flowers there but I quite didn't have that um, that piece to to create so I just did the next best thing work with what I had and I just you know created the little pieces of straw to add to it so what I did is I applied hot glue all over the the brown parts there in the top and I stopped the the hay around all that area just making sure not to burn myself and make sure I used thick um, bundles of the hay that will cover all the hot glue just be very careful if you're able use like a silicone spatula so you don't burn yourself and I just trim the little excess to try to make it look you know somehow rustic but somehow also you know just not too crazy and here is the finished product I hope you like it. I'm very in love with it. I, I really, I don't think this picture gives it justice, but here it is completed. And I am so inspired for Fall Guys Falls. It's my favorite season and I can't wait for the cooler weather. It's been insanely hot over here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for spending time with me again. Have a great day.